Hi and welcome to the One Brick Workshop. I'm Nathan and today I'm going to be trying to make a stop motion armature. Now this is going to be a series of videos because I have no idea what I'm doing. I have a few references such as stop motion armatures, uh, machining by Tom Brierton, and apparently it is kind of the bible on how to do stop motion armatures. It's a little dense. It's um, little dated as in the images are not great black and white kind of pixelated uh, but it is chock full of information i am taking info from this i'm taking information from behind the scenes videos from leica and from Ardman and uh, freelance animators and trying to take all of their knowledge and uh, put it to use so today i will try to make a ball and socket joint that is uh, two metal plates that sandwich two sockets, uh, which are made up of ball bearings with metal pipes or threaded tubing in them. Uh, so I'm gonna see how far I get. This is gonna be a series of videos. This won't all be accomplished in one because it will be a learning process and I want to record everything. I wanna show my mistakes. I want to show my successes. Uh, I want you guys to learn as I am learning because I am completely new to this. So uh, let's get started. The smallest strip of 1 8 inch aluminum I could get from my local hardware store was half an inch wide, so I cut it down lengthwise to have two strips just under a quarter of an inch wide. Aluminum is soft enough to be safely used on most woodworking tools, as long as you watch out for the metal chips and filings. I cleaned up the edges on the belt sander and marked out every inch before cutting down the strips again on the bandsaw. Each plate now had new rough edges, and they were too small to safely sand on the belt sander, so one by one, I secured the plates in a vise and filed away until the plate edges were worn smooth. It wasn't necessary, but I decided to sand all sides of the plate with some medium grit sandpaper as well. Once everything was sanded, I used a sharpie to mark the locations of three holes. Two of these holes seat the ball bearings, and one is for the screw that holds the whole joint together. Okay, before we continue, we need to do a crash course on screw terminology and names. The Stop Motion Armature Machine book often mentioned making holes for 632 screws. 632 refers to the size of the screw, number 6, and the size of the thread of the screw, 32 threads per inch. It's easiest to consult a chart to determine exactly how big a number 6 screw is. There's also fine and coarse threads, but that's another issue entirely. Thanks to the book, I knew that if I wanted to drill a hole that would fit a 632 screw, I would need to use a 764th bit. With the bit in place on my drill press, I prepped my plates for drilling. In an attempt to make the holes of a joint line up, I taped two plates together with painter's tape. A quick tap with a spring punch puts a small dent in the aluminum, which helps the drill bit not wonder when it first contacts the surface. I then secured them in a drill press vise. Oh, also, ignore the LED display on my drill press. It isn't actually spazzing out, I incorrectly set the shutter speed on my camera when I was recording this. Once the bit was lined up and the vise clamped down, I lubricated the bit with some tap fluid. This isn't entirely necessary with aluminum since it's so soft, but it doesn't hurt either and it helps the bit last longer. And I'm done. That was quick. The hole looks pretty good, but the tape didn't do much to hold the plates together, so I decided to try a small dab of CA glue, also known as super glue. I clamped it and came back to it a few minutes later. I punched the other two marks and started drilling, and the glue didn't do anything at all. I decided to drill the last of the hole separately. Next, I wanted to countersink the holes so the balls would have a place to sit, but I had some trouble getting the single plates into the vise properly. Finally, I just opted to hold the plate with some needle nose pliers, and that worked just fine. All right, so conclusion time for the first uh, experiments. I have learned a lot about aluminum. I've learned that it is softer than I expected. Uh, this is coming from someone who's really never worked with any metal whatsoever. Aluminum is very soft, which is great for drilling and for shaping. It also means that you can over drill something really easily, uh, like the ball seating, for the first test, uh, I countersunk that hole way too much, and so the joints 
just the, the, the ball just completely sinks into the joint and it doesn't have much room to maneuver. Uh, secondly, um, getting the holes to line up properly when you're drilling your two plates so that both of the plates line up, that's a challenge. And I'm gonna need to think about some rigs or some jigs that I can set up maybe with my drill press to be able to align these two plates more precisely so perhaps I can drill them at once. The super glue experiment didn't quite work. It uh, held the plates together fine until I took it to the drill press and then the drill just shook it apart. So I think I need to find a way to be able to clamp these two plates together while I'm drilling them. I also need to find a better way to shape the plates when I'm cutting them out so that they're more precisely the same size. Uh, even though I cut the plates from the same width of aluminum, as I sanded them and as I worked with them, they became two different sizes. So I need to find a way to uh, really dial in, really make sure that they're the same size, uh, especially when I'm drilling the three holes. Um, besides that, I think it was a huge success. I didn't even get to coming up with the uh, ball bearings. I was using these uh, body jewelry things, which is funny. I worked at a jewelry company for five years and it never occurred to me that these um, body piercing joys, these go in the tongue or the eyebrow, though this one is a little big for the eyebrow. Uh, I never thought, oh wait, this is, this is a ball joint. This is at least the one end of a ball joint. So I ordered 50 from eBay and they work well for now. They're a surgical stainless steel, so they're much harder than the aluminum, uh, which is what you want for the balls. And um, they work well. I will want to try to drill my own at some point, but for my current experiments, um, these will do just fine. And I have a whole bag of them that I got for $20 uh, on eBay for um, bulk. So that's great. So for the next video uh, that will come out in two weeks, um, maybe a, another armature video, or it might be a different project. It depends on what I get done first, but I definitely for next time want to tackle um, me more precisely drilling these plates, more precisely cutting them, and also learning how to tap the holes, which is to add the screw thread into the center hole so I can properly apply a screw to the center so I can join the plates together with the uh, ball joints sandwiched between them. So for now, uh, welcome to the inaugural uh, One Brick Studios workshop video. I hope you guys liked it. There'll be more to come, and uh, thanks for watching.